You could say Eric Church hit Nashville like a shot of Jack Daniels. Turn it quiet up. Turn the noise down. Play it to soul world. Just spin around. His music leans in with country honky tonk and then rises up with blasts of rock and roll. Drink a little drink, smoke a little smoke. His rowdy fans drink it all up. There's a couple songs that they always, it's like clockwork, they're going to fight on this song or that song. I know that they're going to have sex on this one kind of openly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then, you know, my, you know, my parents are in the pit, so it's awesome. It's a, <laughs> fantastic. At 36, one of Nashville's hottest performers is also its latest bad boy. You gotta do is put a drink in my hand. Did you really punch a security guard who was trying to stop one of your fans? It was more of a kick. Somewhat of a punch. It was a punch kick. It was whatever, however I could get to him. Because we, we came from bars and clubs, I don't want anybody to ever assume I can't handle the environment we're in. When you've played the places we've played, and now you're playing where we are, let, let the spirit move, man. Damn, I used to love this view. Sit here and drink a few. Main Street in the high school. Lit up on Friday night. But this bad boy was a pretty good kid. Church grew up in Granite Falls, North Carolina. In high school, he was student body president and a star basketball player. I'm a competitive person, and I carry that into my music. I always have. So a lot of that comes from here. When I put on the hat and sunglasses, it's no different than putting on a uniform in the locker room. You know, it's changing your mindset. Game face. Game face. Church bought his first guitar at 13, got better fast, and started playing in local bars. How old were you when you first started playing here? I was probably 20, 19 or 20, um, in college. Any idea what you were doing? No. It's here where he found his fans. Many country artists were singing for the soccer moms. Church went after the guys, especially the partiers. You know, we played a lot of those places that were a little rougher, but at the same time, it was just people kind of cutting loose from their lives. I learned that those were, even early on, those were our kind of people. You know, we were able to communicate with those people, sometimes fight with those people, but it was, all, it was all good. Church was 26 when he got a record deal and began rattling Nashville's feel-good country scene. Six weeks in, she was three weeks late. With songs like Two Pink Lines, about a teenage couple sweating out a pregnancy test. He's gonna decide where to sit around waiting on to pay In 2006, he opened for the group Rascal Flats. This was his big break, the year's biggest country music tour. First time you play Madison Square Garden, you got fired. You got fired. Yeah. Well, we, we were on the Rascal Flats tour, and it just, it honestly, wasn't a great fit. And I'm not a guy. Um, that follows rules great. Um, and, and when some rules were put out there, I, I broke them. I probably played too long. I played louder than I was supposed to. I went to places on the stage I wasn't supposed to go. How soon after you walked off the stage did you know you had a problem? Uh, imme about immediately, <laughs> yeah. You kinda, well, I kind of knew deer. <laughs> but I thought, if you're going to go down. <laughs> His reputation became radioactive. Country music clubs stopped hiring him. So he played backwater rock clubs across America. With little left to lose, he doubled down on his bad boy image with the marijuana anthem, Smoke a Little Smoke. Once that song came out, sales went crazy. We, we, sold, more, we sold more albums on that song than we had ever. Eric Church's career was reborn. His third album, Chief, included the breakthrough single, Springsteen, a rock-influenced teenage love ballad. Chief was named Album of the Year, 
by both the Country Music Awards and the Academy of Country Music. You get up here and it's a little different perspective and a little different focus. Zero distractions. Zero distractions. 5,000 feet sky high in North Carolina's Blue Ridge Mountains, away from the spotlight and the rowdy fans, church goes to think and write. You know, you're up here and you can almost lose yourself in it a little bit. And sometimes I think the music needs that where you come up here to do a job, but after a couple of weeks up here, you're just, you're in a different frame of mind. You're in a different tempo. You're at a different pace. I, I've been gone. Been gone too long, singing my songs on a roof. Another town. He wrote 121 songs in a month. Twelve of them became his newest album, Out Tuesday, called The Outsiders. He's still a rebel on it, stepping on the boots of country's purists. But climb aboard his tour bus, and you'll see a guy even the soccer moms might like, traveling the country with his wife, Catherine, and their two-year-old son, Boone. He's performing on stage, and then off stage, he's very much a, a wonderful father, a great husband. He's my best friend. I always go back to, we played Memphis, Tennessee, and there were 10,000 people there, and Boone was out with us. And I happened to get back to the bus um, at the time that he was waking up and had Dirty Diver, and I still had the <laughs> hat and sunglasses on, necklace, whole deal, and I had changed the diaper. And it, what I always imagined is when I was a, a younger fan, you always wonder what the artist is doing when you leave the arena. <laughs> Last month, Eric Church, the outsider, stepped inside the mother church of country music, Nashville's Ryman Auditorium, to headline a grand old Opry show. Early Monday morning, the Friday fight. Man, I work, 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 but I don't find my It was a hard road to success, but the only one worth taking. That's the gospel, according to church. Five, four, three, two, one. I'll be your rocket man. All you got, I'll do is put a train in my head. 